welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're delighted that you've welcomed us into your home. We would love to hear from you. So send us an email with a question or a comment to Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. Well, our guest today again is David Carollo. He is the executive director of the World Apostolate of Fatima. Go to the website bluearmy.com and become a member of God's great army. Amen. So wonderful. Well, David's doing a wonderful job. The Worldwide Apostolate of Fatima is just super. I'm just thinking about uh, what's happening in our own age and time and possibly some of the fruits from the centennial celebration of the Fatima apparitions. And the other day, uh, you were out of town, but I went to our grandson's football game at our local Catholic high school, John Carroll Catholic High School. I got there a little bit early. And I've gone to many games at John Carroll because you know, our son played there as well. well. Four of our children went there. I don't know if I got there early, and this is what they usually do or not, but as I was walking up into the stadium, paid my money and was walking in, they were praying the rosary over the loudspeaker. And there was these girls were praying it. They were leading the sorrowful mysteries. You know, Jesus is in Gethsemane, and Jesus is scourged, and, and you know, Jesus uh, is mocked and takes up his... They're saying these words, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And then everyone was responding, the second part of the Hail Mary. And this was in the atmosphere. And the opposing teams on the other side, all their, their people, not necessarily Catholic. Public school. Public school people, right. but we're in a Catholic school. Right. And I, I was just awed that I was going up to a football game. It's the first time it's ever happened in my life. And I was hearing the rosary prayed mm -hmm. beautifully, not just, you know, said by these young ladies that were praying it so meaningfully and announcing each, each of the sorrows. I approached the field and there was young men, high school kids, in, in a cross, all holding candles as the rosaries being said. And, and the parents and family members are, are responding and some people aren't even moving or going anyplace because they were just revering the prayer. And it was just so powerful. And I said, this is, must be some of the fruit of Fatima. Our children are praying the rosary even at uh, you know, a football gathering like this, and you know, we see the children's rosary campaign that's taking place with young children, um, and it was just very, very encouraging, and it was a great sell for Catholic schools, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. What other place, what other game do you go to where they're praying the rosary in sincerity before the game? I will say that we lost the game. We did. But I think we're going to win the game of eternity with our there kids. There you and, go. Yeah. No, it's so beautiful. Um, when you were telling me the story, because I was away with our daughters and yeah. we had a, a birthday weekend kind of time, and you were telling me the story, I was like getting so excited. So beautiful to see as you're preparing the land, right? Preparing the hearts of all the people. And I said, what were the people in the stands doing? And what were our grandchildren doing? How did it go? And you described it yeah. so beautiful. And um, That was the highlight our young people, teenagers, sincerely, earnestly seeking the face of Christ through the mysteries with Our Lady in public mm. and, and seeing people on the opposing side who may not even be familiar with the rosary honoring and, 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 and they are knowing that something spiritual is happening. David Carollo is back with us today, World Apostolate of Fatima, BlueArmy.com. What an important message he has for this day and this time. Don't go away. We'll be right back. More to come. Today, our guest is David Carollo, who is the executive director of the World Apostolate of Fatima. You can go to the website, bluearmy.com. We had David on the show on Wednesday. And so today, we're going to finish up this fabulous conversation that we were having. But I want you to tell our family at home, there is a shrine in New Jersey. Yes, there is. Right? So why don't you tell them where it is? It's like there's a tree in Brooklyn. There's a shrine in New Jersey. <laughs> I've been there. I know that tree. Yeah. Um, tell our family at home a little bit about that shrine, what they can expect. If they pilgrimage there, what happens for them? Well, our shrine is located 50 miles west of New York, basically. We're 14 miles from the Pennsylvania border, western New Jersey, the foothills of the Pocono Mountains, 
70 miles or so from, from Philadelphia. And it's a beautiful area, beautiful shrine, 150 acres of, uh, wow. I, I have a picture of it. This is, of course, our magazine, Soul Magazine, which I mentioned before. And that's a picture of the shrine up there. And it says right there, it's a shrine built for a queen. Mm. That's what it is. A lot is. of people yeah. don't know New Jersey is the garden state. It is the garden <laughs> state, you know, and I, I hate to say there's there's reasons why it, it gets disrespected, but come to our area and you'll see why. What's it's the beautiful. history? How did you all get that? Well, land? Mr. Haffert, it's the founder, John Haffert, this was his land, his, his, his wow. farmland. And there was a huge big barn, white barn. They called it, quote, the barn. Mm -hmm. Well, that became the first offices of the Ave Maria Institute of the Blue Army. And that's where they operated out for many years, published this magazine, published um, our books, and promoted the apostolate nationwide initially and then worldwide. I mean, it was amazing. Between that site and our hotel retreat center, in Fatima, right. Domus Pachis, mm -hmm. that's how we, that's where we operated out of. So the shrine has, uh, you know, many different things. In 1970, uh, well, say in 1970, they built the Holy House, okay, for, and, and dedicated it some years later. That is the, the, we became the convent in the Holy House Chapel, and that chapel is the direct duplicate of the Holy House of Loreto in Italy. Wow. Really a beautiful thing to visit and uh, has many of the graces and the, even the indulgences given to the Holy House are extended mm -hmm. to visit there. Mm -hmm. um, then of course in 1978 we opened up the big shrine up on top of the hill. We have, we seat 1,500 people under the roof wow. for our events um, and on big days that's nothing. We mm -hmm. can pack them in. For mm -hmm. example, I'll give you uh, May 13th of last year, the centennial May 13th. I prayed and we prayed. Everybody was on their knees. Good weather, that good weather. What well, started raining at two o'clock in the morning and it rained all the way through till midnight. Never stopped. It was mm -hmm. a quagmire. Mm -hmm. And oh my God, what kind of crowd are we going to have? We we estimate about 7,500 people came that day. My goodness. The, the traffic we aggravated everybody for 10 miles mm -hmm. from there. We can imagine mm -hmm. the police were pulling their hair out because right. people were coming from everywhere, and we laughed that we were waiting for the miracle of the sun because yeah. of course in October, <laughs> yeah, in fat of October 17th, the, everything came and here came the miracle of the sun. Everything dried out. Well, I say we had that day the miracle of the rain mm -hmm. because so many people came and it didn't stop them. We had, yeah. we had some additional tents up. A lot of people got wet, but a lot of them were inside under the tents and under the, under the roof. And, and the beauty of it is the devotion. It showed me that the centennial brought so much devotion, okay? On the lower level, we have a crypt chapel, which we have most of our off-season events, our, our daily masses. We have mass every day, mass and confessions, even in the off-season when there's not many people there, but we yeah. keep that up with the exception of the Easter Tritium, which we defer to our parishes for that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but we have events on May 13th, July, June, July, August, September, and October so every year. October, yeah. So October 13th this year was very good. We had about 3,000 people there this year. Last year we had about 6,000, okay. but again, it was yeah. the centennial. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this past uh, uh, Saturday we had um, His Excellency Bishop DiMarzio of Brooklyn was there as our cellarman. He comes every year, and so do many of the others. Mm -hmm. uh, bishop Cecchio, who's the bishop of the diocese of Metuchen, where we're located. Um, Bishop Joseph Perry, who's our very dear friend and our, our uh, uh, Episcopal advisor, is there every year. Uh, Cardinal Burke was there in August, on August 13th. So we, we do have a good run of, of, of bishops and, and priests that come for our events. And it's beautiful. We start with the, with the confessions from 1030. We have the rosary procession at noon, mm -hmm. followed by a talk at 1230 and the Mass at 115, followed by enrollment in the Brown Scapular, Blessing of Religious Articles, Eucharistic Procession, and then we end up with the Divine Mercy Chaplet at the end beautiful. of the day. So it's a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. And we also are set up on our webcam. People who really can't be there can go on bluearmy.com mm -hmm. and, and watch it. And we are directly connected with EWTN for some of our events, so mm -hmm. they can, uh, right. we're hoping to have more things televised directly, certain things mm -hmm. that are, are, are pertinent. and. Um, but we, 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 we looked, you know, that, that that shrine is a real center of holiness. I mean, it truly is. It's been there now. Uh, that's where the Apostle was founded in 1947, when Monsignor Colgan, right. who had come up with this concept of a blue army of prayer to counter the red army of atheistic communism, connected with John Haffert. And they together formed this apostolate. And, uh, and this is Haffert's land that he This is his land, and his okay. family's land, or now, his land was that he it donated. Haffert or the Monsignor, maybe both of them did, that met with Sister Lucia? And what was conveyed in those it, meetings? It was John Haffert who met okay. with Sister Lucia. And he sat down with her and he said, he said, 
what did Our Lady truly want? He said, the recitation of the rosary, yeah. right? Yeah. And she said, no, people need to become holy. Mm -hmm. It's holiness, it's personal holiness. Uh, you and I had a discussion earlier, we were talking about sometimes the Protestant view of yeah. things, and Protestants are always very much with this idea of a personal relationship with Christ, okay? Right. And, and we as Catholics, okay, I guess, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't embrace that kind of statement as much. But that's exactly what it is. That's right. your personal relationship with yeah. God, okay? That's what Sister Lucia talked about, you know? Yeah. And we need that. we can't forget that. Now, of course, our avenue to that is the sacraments, that's right? That's right. Okay? And, and so we have to be always looking in that direction. Yeah, I just want, I, what's come to me is just amazing <laughs> because we want to emphasize a personal relationship with God. And who had the personal relationship with God is Mary. Our Lady. Right. right. The, if we could just explain that to our Protestant brethren and yeah. just speak of her maybe as you know the head of chief of all disciples or the yeah. the first disciple and you want intimacy you want a personal relationship queen we of know apostles, through the sacraments queen of angels all, queen of patriarchs right. <laughs> and and in yeah, the language yeah. you know we say do you have a personal relationship with jesus christ in protestant lingo well yes i have the honor and privilege of receiving him yeah. in my body yeah. every, every single day single i think day. i have a personal encounter how about yeah. you yeah. you know right yeah. well, now why don't it. you why don't you tell our family about the fruits and the graces that came out of that centennial year you know it's interesting i think a lot of people you know we all want the sensational to some degree okay the greater or lesser degree i shy away from it a little bit cuz a lot of responsibility goes with it <laughs> but I think a lot of people were waiting for that great miracle to happen. Oh, it's a centennial year. Our Lady is going to shake the world, dump all the evil. And like, well, there was a miracle last year, okay? And that miracle was an opening up of hearts and minds, yes. mm -hmm. okay? So. More so than ever, and we see it everywhere. And you're seeing a lot of things this year, in my opinion, in the political world, in the church, a lot of disruption, isn't there, mm -hmm. okay? Ultimately, I think this is good. I think mm -hmm. this is going to bring about, you know, there's an awareness on a part of people that we have to change the way we live and change begins with us, right. okay? Right. Whether it be and how we go to the ballot box and how we deal with us, that's all a result of that internal awakening. And I think that is the true fruit of, of the centennial year and the Fatima message this year. Um, I mean, you know, there, it, whatever, there's no, what is that? No pain, no gain, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to be willing now to fight and suffer for it because the church is under attack right. from within mm -hmm. and from without, mm -hmm. okay? And, and believe me, you know, the ravenous animals are just ready to tear it apart, you know? And, but we have to understand, you know, we have to look at what's happening in the church and we have to realize, that, yes, there are people that are very culpable and have made grave mistakes, okay? But never forget that the far majority of priests and bishops and others are faithful people who mm -hmm. love God and love the church and want to save souls. That's, right. That's what we as an apostolate need to do. We need to pray, okay? We're an apostolate of prayer. And I often say what the curie of ours once said, that there's no such thing as a bad priest, mm -hmm. just one that hasn't been prayed for enough, mm -hmm. okay? That's us. Mm -hmm. Are we praying enough for it? Have we merited the good priests and bishops, you know? Family, you know, of course, yours is a family show. Mm -hmm. Where are good clerics as well as good family people form? Mm -hmm. In the home. Mm -hmm. It yeah. starts at home, you yeah. know. And yeah. it does seem that some of the most holy of clerics down through the ages, as well as now, are those that have the most intimate relationship with Our Lady. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and that's how we should be praying, too. If there's yeah. troubled clergy or whatever, you know, these are your sons. Yeah. These are your sons, lady, and we we're praying for them. We pray that they would know the joy and the purity and the reverence that comes from having you as their mother. Yeah. And like I said, I'm, I'm a late comer to intimacy with Our Lady, sure. you know, and, and I think this year has really been an opening of my heart and right. my mind yeah. even, even more fully. Yeah. And you, you, she's, oh, she's been in relationship with me. Sure. She's in relationship with our priest. They're not in relationship they with her. Return it. You, know, right. you, you have to reciprocate. It. Yeah. Does your mother ever stop loving you if you do something? Well, you're a mother. Mm -hmm. You know, if your never. kids do something, you know, like you never stop never. loving you. You may mm -hmm. want to strangle them, right. but you never stop loving them, right. okay? Now, at a certain point, they have to come to that realization mm -hmm. and, and return that Speak love. Speak more about the fruits that, that you see happening from the centennial, or just in general. Do you see a renewal, a revival of the message of Fatima, or praying the rosary, or leading holiness of life? 
uh, consecration to Jesus with Mary, yeah. home consecration, what's going on? I see a lot. Oh, I do too. We mm -hmm. see it. We see it a lot. I mean, even though, you know, there is that surge in the, uh, during the centennial year, and then maybe it seemed like it tailed off a little bit. Well, people are just exhausted. We all were. Our, we were. Mm -hmm. Our people. I mean, I mean, I was, I don't know how many miles I traveled last year speaking. Our guys, we were here last January, if you recall, with, you do, of course, with mm -hmm. Patrick Sabat when we mm -hmm. had the International Pilgrim Virgin here. And um, I mean, those guys were on the go constantly. We have we have three statues constantly traveling around the United States, and I mean, they were they're exhausted. I mean, again, I say they're going to be saints, and their wives are going to be bigger <laughs> saints because <laughs> they've been left home. Yes. They've been they've been widowed during mm -hmm. this time, you know. But but it's just that there was but the outpouring when we started the Centennial Tour for Peace, we started it on March 21st of 2016, which was the date that the first apparition of the Angel of Peace. Yeah. Was was, it was that they, the children didn't know the exact mm -hmm. day. So the shrine in Fatima selected the first day of spring. We jumped on it with them. Father Andrew Apostoli, our dear friend, may he rest in peace, was there with us. We we had a mass at the shrine and we sent our motor home around the country. And we said we want to do in the two years of the centennial of 2016, 2017, we want to visit 100 dioceses in 100 weeks. And by the end of the centennial last year, we had visited 140. Okay, of the 195 in the in the United States, if you include the Byzantine and all, you know, so we we cover every every all 50 states, including Alaska and Hawaii. I mean, we went we went everywhere, last and it was such a it, it's edifying. I mean, the number of people that you came see a to the hunger in the people to hear. Oh, oh, I mean, it, it, the stories. I could be on the show for five weeks and give you stories <laughs> of what the, the uh, we we heard from people, and and but but you know the bottom line is they didn't go there and necessarily get answers that they were asking for, they came away to a great degree with an understanding mm -hmm. of what they were facing. Now, there were many direct answers and mm -hmm. prayers, you know, things answered and such, but, but most of the people came back and said, now I understand why God put this in my life, yeah. and now I can work through it and I can help others. That's really what it's all about. You know, we're not here necessarily to be happy. Mm -hmm. We're here to gain our salvation, yeah. you know, on earth or in purgatory, you know. I mean, we got to do, first we have to, we have to save souls. Mm -hmm. We have to do our best to get as many people as possible to turn back to God so they're not lost. Right. You know, Our Lady showed the vision of hell in, in the July apparition, mm -hmm. and she said, you've seen where mm -hmm. poor sinners go. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there's no one to pray and make reparation for them. Mm -hmm. How sad. You know, yeah. And that's why now is the time we have to be in the army and we have to do our part. Yeah. It's not later, it's now. It's now, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, I don't want to get too detailed, but speaking to somebody that was seeking a, a employment at EWTN, sure. and I said to her, you know, when the whole thing comes down to this, Mother Angelica said, this is about for the salvation of souls. That's what this whole yeah. thing is about, sure. saving sure. souls from heaven, yeah. you know, for heaven and, and from hell. And mm -hmm. I said to the person, do you believe in hell? I mean, do we have, yeah. and she said, I'm Catholic. She yeah. met, she, I'm, I'm Catholic. Boy, that's what we need. You know, I'm it's a Catholic, exactly I believe all that the church yeah. affirms to be true. And that's hell as well as heaven. Well, and that's right, mm -hmm. because we're going to make choices, heaven, hell, and purgatory. Mm -hmm. You know, I recently saw uh, Bishop Marlino from Madison on with Raymond Arroyo, yes. actually, okay, if you, if you caught that. And he said I something, did. he said, he said, well, I talk about purgatory. He said, he said, I think when the time comes, St. Peter's going to throw me the keys. He said, You'll be the last one out of here. Just lock up when you're done. You know? <laughs> oh but we all have to look at it that no, way. It's really I mean, true. one sin, if one sin can can merit us eternal damnation, think about mm -hmm. purgatory and what it's about. Okay, it is mercy. Mm -hmm. It is God's mercy. Now we try to make up for it as much as we can here on earth. Uh, and how best do you do that? But you know, you, but living. Amen. You know, the, what are the theological virtues? Faith, hope, and charity. Okay, yes. faith and hope are gone at the end of the world. You don't need faith. You'll see everything. You'll either gained or lost everything you hope for at that point, but charity endures eternally, mm -hmm. okay? And so what's a better way to show charity, the Fatima message, you know, mm -hmm. praying for the salvation of souls? Do you realize how many, how grateful people will be? You know, yes. this idea that we have to, you know, we don't admonish the sinner yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. That's a big fault of ours, you know? We're gonna take a break at this point. You're not excited about this message, not are you? Not <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll be right back. It's thebluearmy.com for more information. Don't go away. Thank you. 
Welcome back. Well, we're visiting today with David Carolla, but first we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan Lewis. Now, Joan, what are your thoughts on the message of Fatima? Well, greetings from Rome, and uh, of course you all know we're in the month of October, and it was exactly almost to the day, 101 years ago, that Mary appeared to the shepherd children in the village of Fatima for the very last time. And ever since then, we've all been asking, you're asking, is the message of Fatima still relevant all these 101 years later? Well, I'm going to give you the capsule version of two popes, how they saw Fatima's message, and indeed for them, how relevant it was. Now, the message, according to Sister Lucia, of course, is this. We must sacrifice ourselves for sinners, for love of Jesus, for the conversion of sinners, and for reparation for the sins committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Now, Pope John Paul visited Fatima three times, and he had always said it was the hand of Mary, the La Our Lady of Fatima, that deflected the bullet that was fired at him in St. Peter's Square on May 13, 1981. Now, exactly a year later to the day, he went to Fatima for the first time, and here's what he said in his homily. He said, the evangelical call to repentance and conversion contained in Our Lady of Fatima's message remains ever relevant. It's even more relevant now, 65 years later, than it was those years ago. In fact, it is more urgent now. Now, Benedict XVI also went to Fatima, and, but here's what he called the message. He said it's a stern warning, a summons to the seriousness of life, of history, of the perils that threaten mankind. And in his 2010 visit, here's what he said in his homily. We would be mistaken to think that Fatima's prophetic message is complete. Mankind has succeeded in unleashing a cycle of death and terror, but failed in bringing it to an end. In sacred scripture, we often find that God seeks righteous men and women in order to save the city of man, and he does the same here in Fatima when Mary asks us, do you want to offer yourselves to God to endure all the sufferings he will send you as an act of reparation for the sins by which he is offended and of supplication for the conversion of sinners? Well, I think you'll agree today, looking at the world today, we agree with these popes that the message of Fatima is indeed still relevant. So, time's up here. Back to you. Thanks so much, Joan, for those powerful quotes from our popes and others who stand in solidarity with the message of Fatima. So, Dave, what does the future hold? What's your emphasis with the uh, Blue Army and the uh, World Apostolate of Fatima at this time? You know, what's old is what's new. Mm -hmm. I mean, we go back, our, our, our statue tours, sign this pledge. Are you willing to offer your lives? It's not that it's difficult, you know. Consecrate yourself to Our Lady. You know, promise to say five decades of the rosary daily. Um, work towards the first Saturdays, fulfilling the, the, the devotion of the first Saturdays. This is what it's about. It's what it was about in 1947 when Sister Lucia showed John Hafford what she wanted. And this is what it's about today. BlueArmy.com, you can sign up online. It's high tech now. We don't have to worry mm -hmm. about getting a piece of paper to you and getting it back. Mm -hmm. Everybody's name is sent to Fatima that does this and remembered in there. And I think that's what it is. We're in a different technological age, okay? So instead of writing a lot of things and sending them out, I'm sitting here on a television show. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. We use the technology that's at right. hand here. But, but, but the essence of why we do it is the same, okay? It's holiness. It's bringing souls to living, you know, yeah. bringing Fatima to the people and the people to Fatima, as we right. said. Um, our, our pilgrimage company, AveMariaPilgrimages.com, take a look at the trips we have. We go to Fatima. We do not only, well, these aren't vacation trips, and they're fun, pilgrimages, catechesis, not only the Fatima, but Fatima to Lourdes, to, to Italy, to Poland, to the Holy Land. But everywhere we go, it's a catechesis because you want to bring people to living in accord with the Gospels. That's what Our Lady asked for, you know. Live lives with the heart of Mary, okay, you know. Uh, if you have a successful marriage, it's not because the two of you are that close, it's because you have God in the middle, yeah. okay. To God be the glory. And that's where it's going to be in eternity. <laughs> right. We're going to see each other. My wife and I love each other dearly. Mm -hmm. We're going to see each other more and more through the prism of God and probably love each other more at that point. Mm -hmm. But that's what it really is about. That's all Our Lady asked for, okay? You know, it, it, the, the Fatima message is nothing more than the message that the church has been giving for 2,000 years. 
with a few warnings and things thrown in, but yes. you know that's really what it's about. Well, Dave, thank yeah. you so much. I mean, you. your sense of urgency yeah. for this yeah. and your sense of victory in this is just so absolutely clear. Thank you for carrying on such well, a great you. Thank tradition. You. Um, so the Holy Hour for Healing and Justice will be this week. It'll be held at the Shrine in Hansville at 6 p.m. If you're here locally, uh, please come. 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Central Time. Let's all together build a new culture of life. Let's give ourselves to Jesus through Mary. Let us pray the rosary and let us seek her help that we might live holy lives in this time and in the age to come, have life everlasting. Keep it on EWTN. You're an important part of this family. You're always at home with Jim and Joy. Bye now.